The video that you're about to watch is an excerpt from a live webinar. If you enjoy the contents of this video, please like and subscribe. I'd love to hear your comments. Thanks for watching. Does divine being want to experience suffering like war? And or is this suffering our choice as humans? Oh, that's a good question. The divine fearlessly wants to go into the darkness. The divine is creating the creation and it fearlessly wants to go everywhere. And it needs to go everywhere in order to eliminate the suffering. God does not want people to suffer. God does not want suffering. But the way we interact with the experience of separation can sometimes delay the integration of the divine. This is such a good, this is a really, really important question. So let's just dig into it a little bit. The impulse to evolve rises up from deep inside. If we interact with that impulse to evolve early, if we, we catch it early, then anywhere there's a little feeling of, yes, but I'm separate. I'm not really one with the divine. We catch that early. And when you catch it early, like say so you catch it down at the causal body level or the astral body level, you can interact with it down there with your awareness. And the whole physiology is extremely pliable at that level of creation. Like, okay, just as an example, let's get a concrete example going. Suppose you catch a feeling of being separate from the source of creation down at the causal body level. Well, what that's going to feel like is it's going to feel like bumping into something demonic. It's going to feel like bumping into something dark, like an entity. Always covered in like a crust, like a crusty outer dark shell like layer that will often trigger in patterns of emotional response that can make you feel like you want to just recoil and you you don't have the resources to deal with it. So when bumping into that energy, the principle is that it will always feel bigger than you. If your awareness is seated, okay, at a higher, more concrete level. So if you're looking at that form from say an emotional or a mental level, it's going to like for an emotion, a mental level, for example, we've been reading all these books on, um, on Christian orthodoxy and they say, oh, well, you know, the devil shows up in people's minds as dark thoughts, as cruel thoughts or wrong thoughts or something like that. And so these are the way the, the legions of the devil show up is, you know, like, you know, a thought of doing something that would be unkind or something. But from the mental level, you look at that and you think, well, you know, there's some form down there that's that's for that's somehow giving rise to this fountain of unpleasantness inside of me. But the energy healing suggests that what we do is we dive deeper. If if I'm at the mental level and I'm picking up on something like, why am I having that negative thought? Why is that dark thought there? Then what I do is I dive underneath it. I look at it from the emotional level. Remember our chart? Do we need to go back to the chart? Uh, go back to the chart just for a second here. Um, zoom out. Okay, so we're maybe we're catching the darkness up here, but the darkness is um, it originates down here. So if we go down to the emotional level and we feel like, oh yeah, there's some dark emotions there too, but I still don't feel like I've got a handle on this thing, and it feels like it's bigger than me, then we just keep diving down because eventually you're going to come to the ocean of being. Nothing is bigger than the ocean of being. Nothing. The biggest, most vast, universal, dark, demonic forces in this creation are not bigger than the ocean of being. And as human beings, we own the whole thing. The whole field is ours. We go from the ocean of being all the way to the physical body. There is no part of this that is not ours. And so we dive down, you'll find there'll come a point where you'll dive down deep enough that you're deeper than that darkness. Whatever that feeling of separation is, wherever it's seated in the spectrum of manifestation, of the manifest form, there will become a point where you realize, oh, I'm deeper than it now. And when you are deeper, 
you are then witnessing it. You are bringing the light of the divine to bear upon it. Nothing in creation is more charming than the ocean of bliss, than the source of all that is. That's the most charming thing that there ever, ever was or there ever, ever will be. And when you shine your light to bear upon it, you create a pathway for that feeling of separation to find its way home. The little lost sheep. All, so all of a sudden, it doesn't look like a big, scary, dark, oh no thing. It just looks like a little lost sheep. And, and it goes home. It gets taken back. It, it goes back to the embrace of absolute, unconditional love and acceptance and wholeness. And no matter how dark or nasty it showed up, maybe there was some thought that was just an awful thought, just an awful thought. But that was just a, that's just an illusory little sign at the surface that was to grab your attention. So you take the dive, you find that little guy down there, and you create a path for it to go back home. And all you have to do is shine your light upon it. Because once the light is shown upon it, there's no effort to get it to go back home. All things are spontaneously drawn back to the source of creation. So the doing involved is very, very slight. It's like almost no doing at all. You just focus the attention from the right perspective. And it happens. It happens. And when you're focused from, from a perspective that's very refined, you get to enjoy watching the process by which that, that aspect of self that was feeling separated wends its way back. There's like a process and it's, it's so evolutionary. It's so fascinating. It, it, it unfolds understandings of reality that wouldn't have otherwise come to the awareness, just watching the way nature does that. It's beautiful. And it's, it definitely is usually a combination of an experience of, yes, I'm doing something, but what I'm doing is almost no doing at all. It's very, very simple to, it's just the divine doing it through me. Just the divine is doing it. Isn't there some saying that as you're seeking the divine, the divine is seeking you, something like that. And we're the instruments, we're the vehicles, our physiology and our consciousness is the vehicle that makes that happen. Without us, it doesn't happen. That's why we're useful, you guys. That's why we're important in this world. That's why we're valuable. Without us, it doesn't happen. Never underestimate your value in the eyes of the divine from the perspective of wholeness. Infinite value. So it doesn't want to experience suffering, but it does experience, her, going back to her question, does the divine being want to experience suffering like war or is this suffering our choice as humans? It, the experience of suffering comes down to where you have placed your awareness. Where's the seat of awareness? If there's a little some separation here and you're having nasty thoughts up here and you ignore it, or you try to pretend like it's not there, or you use some other way of means of dealing with it that doesn't completely eliminate it, then what happens is it gets worse and it gets worse and starts to find its way up to even more dense levels of expression. Pretty soon we're showing up as a physical material or it's showing up as collective stress and it bursts out as, as war. I mean, you know, it's, it's rough. And, you know, these days when a war breaks out anywhere in the world, it's on all of us. There are stresses, there are imbalances that are being purified even now as the eclipse occurs. The eclipse, the eclipse is an extremely purifying event. And it's here to purify out those deep stresses. That's why it's here. <laughs> 